on this week's episode of the WNP Podcast. COVID sucks, fantasy is worse, and who even cares about this stuff anymore? Stay tuned. Episode 125 of the We're Not Professionals podcast. I'm your host, Mike Mitchelson, and joining me today, as always, my co-host, Chase Crawshaw. Chase, how you doing? I'm doing swell. Thank you for asking. How are you? I know. It's all right. Yeah, you're, you're hurting a little more these days than I am. Well, it's not even the fantasy thing, because, like, we'll, we'll get into the fantasy thing, but the, the bangles, dude. The freaking bangles. I can't stand them. And you're okay with the Lions because you know they suck. I mean, yeah, I'm okay with the Lions, but like we saw 38 to the Broncos. Yeah. It's not great. No, that is definitely not great. Uh, on today's episode of the We're Not Professionals podcast, going to be talking about fantasy football because we are on our way to the playoffs. Well, at least some of us are. Uh, going to be talking about COVID issues and how that might just, in fact, hurt some people's chances uh, then we're going to be talking very, very briefly about college. want to talk about a couple of things that's happening with the transfer portal and recruiting and stuff like that. Then we're going to be co- talking about coaching, the pain that we feel as Bengals and Lions fans, and then we've got a little agree or disagree. So uh, that's going to be a fun one. So it's you. not what I said AOD was earlier. It, no, no, it oh, is not what okay. you said AOD was. Okay. Uh, let's start with fantasy. So we are both in... I'm at least in four leagues that I know you're in. Uh, one of them is a guillotine league, which uh, not not for much money, but there is some money on the line. You're already out of that. I've made it into the top four with your brother Graham and Pablo. So I can we Pablo stay hanging on? Really hoping that I can continue there. Uh, Dynasty leagues. One of them I'm in playoffs. The other one I'm not, but I've got nine first round picks in the next two years, so I was not planning on it. And then your league, after starting 0-8, I actually had a chance. And then, <laughs> and then it just went away in that yes, final week. Yes, it did. You know, in all those leagues you mentioned, the co- the um, key thing that you said, I, I got out- outed because I had no Derrick Henry, no um, Dak Prescott, and then no Cordell Patterson all in the same week. And those were the three guys that were really carrying me that year. So, you know, that obviously, don't lose at that point. Yeah. But the other three leagues, I've got two buys. And there then I'm go. in, um, I think I'm in third or fourth place in my league, but you, I'm in the playoffs. You have a buy in my league? I have a buy in your league. Oh, my gosh. He was supposed to be in the same state as Johnny and I and being like a rebuilder. Uh, he was desperately trying to get his first round pick back from me uh, for the following draft. But his team started clicking and then you went out and bought before the trade deadline. The best part about my team is... My average age probably got younger by two or three years. I drafted a pretty old team to start off, minus really Jonathan Taylor. He was, like, my only young guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I drafted a pretty old team because I was trying to win right away. And then um, it didn't work out so much. You know, went to playoffs. Things kind of fell apart. Blow up the team. And then, you know, I got a couple young players in on top of some draft picks. I like to think, you know, I kind of like these players. There's a, good, there's a decent chance. And I get off to a hot start. So then I go make a couple moves. And sure enough, boom, I'm flying. I'm, I'm in second place in the league. Very close to getting a high score. Um, you know, I was, I was fighting with Chris for there kind of towards the end. Yeah. And I still have four first-round picks this year. I have a bunch of first-round picks. I think you had three. Or, or, I, oh, you I, traded, I traded one away. You're right. Yeah, it's so a Johnny. I, so, I'm down, yeah, I'm down to three first-round picks. Two second-round picks, a third-round pick, I think. I've got 24 picks. I've got a 23 first and a second. I have a really young team, and I finished in second place. I'm pretty happy with how it's all turned out. I think the first-round picks belong to you, Giuseppe, Johnny, Cam, and I. Because I think you've got three, uh, Johnny's got three, Giuseppe's got four, and then Cam and I both have our own. I that's, think that's, that's how... That sounds about right. I think that's how that works out. So, craziness. I don't know. I honestly feel like Chris is really the guy to beat in my league. Uh, he obviously oh, finished first. Yeah. But his team's been putting up like 160 plus points over the past like four weeks. Yeah. It, he, he's been rolling. My saving grace is that Debo Samuel is getting healthy, mm-hmm. and I have Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, that, that that's what I've really wrote. That, those two and uh, Justin Herbert is what I've really wrote to my success. Justin Herbert's been awesome. Part yeah. of the reason why I've been 
on a four game win streak in Johnny's league because of yeah. Herbert. You know, I trade I traded away Justin Jefferson in the offseason. And you would think, why the hell would you trade the number one dynasty wide receiver? Because at this at this point, he is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people think, why the hell would you do that? And you know, when I got in return, Justin Herbert, James Robinson, one or two first round picks, one or two second round picks as well. I got um I got a total of three or four picks. I remember these exactly how they weren't, but I know it was at least one first and at least one second. But I get all that in return, and you know, I, I traded away James Robinson. You know, at first it was looking bad, and then Urban Meyer decided he hated his gut, so it doesn't matter now anyway. Um, but like I, I after trading James Robinson, I was able to get through that trade tree. Uh, James Conner has been awesome. OBJ who's been having some success, some first round picks as well. You know, like it, it's it's worked out pretty well. I, I've I've gotten lucky, kind of. You you would you would have to guess, like because like they were. They were fairly even trades that could go one way or the other, depending on how things went. And I happened to be on the positive side on each of them, which which worked out well. Mm-hmm. But like my, my team couldn't have had really much better luck in your league. And hey, I'm happy for you and happy for you know the success some people are seeing in my league right now. But you know we're really gonna have to come to reality that in two years from now, I'm gonna have Javante Williams, Michael Carter, who I have right now, C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, uh, Kadarius Tony, Amon Ross, St. Brown. Uh, all these players right now that I have that have helped me get five wins this year, I'm going to have the third overall pick this year and then eight first-round picks the following year. Yeah, it's okay. So I'm going to get Bijan, guaranteed. I don't care. I'll, I'll trade all eight if I don't want the first overall pick. Trade all eight for one overall? Just for Bijan, yeah. Oh, that'd be crazy. Uh, so my team is, you know, it's coming. So just happy for you now, but make sure you, you get some preparations going. I'm praying Alec blows up his team so I get first overall so I can get those eight first round picks from you. Alec, if you're watching, do not do that. <laughs> do not. He's done, funny. It, he's done it once before. Yeah, I don't, need, once. I don't uh, need it to happen again. That's why it could happen. I strictly did not go after his pick because his team looks so good. He's a playoff team, so we'll yeah. see what happens. Um any worries right now with fantasy? Like, are you feeling good about your teams, feeling good about your chances? What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel pretty good. I, d- I don't really expect to win your league. So, you know, I, I'm happy that my team had this success and I still have the young pieces to really help my team succeed in the future. So that's really all that. That's like what I'm happy with. If I happen to, to do well in playoffs this year, cool. If I, may, if, if I can somehow make a miracle run to the finals, because I wouldn't have to face Chris until the finals. Right. Um, then that, that'd be awesome. But if not, you know, it is what it is. Whereas I go over to... Uh, Johnny's league. I have the first place spy in that league. Mm-hmm. I don't have Derrick Henry anymore, <laughs> which sucks. But I still have, in my opinion, at worst, a top two roster in that league. So, um, you know, I, as long as things go right and, you know, COVID doesn't knock out too many players, injuries don't knock out too many players, I should be in a pretty good spot there, too. And then you go to my league. It, my, my league, I mean, like the worst team had five wins and the next had six and the highest had like nine or ten. Like everyone is so close that anything could go any way any week. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't expect to win my league ever because I never have because you never win your own league. That's so, facts. So, you know, if I if, if I happen to win that mo- that league, then I'm going to celebrate harder than I've ever celebrated in my life. But, I, you know, I'm just expecting to have a competent playoff push. There you go. Uh, guillotine league, I'm hoping to get by this week. It's really your brother and Graham have been outscoring everyone by like 20, 30 points each week. So I'm getting a little bit nervous there uh, down to the last four. Really just hoping top three. Uh, and then Johnny's league, I'm in the playoffs. And that's gonna that's a tough league. Like, you've got a bye. Chris has a bye. Uh, Johnny and my team are the hottest teams in the league right now with five wins in a row, um, including one off of you. So, and then... I gave you that one. You're welcome. Right. And then Garrett, his team is really good too. So... Paul is okay, but Paul's team always seems to blow up in the playoffs, and it makes no sense. They do. So it's it's a scary one, but I feel pretty good about my team right now. So I, I think that as long as my team doesn't bust, then there's a chance that I could be in the in the championship there. So yeah, if, if you you know if if you end up coming out of this matchup, you'll be playing me. So we'll have a you know pretty quick yeah. turnaround of matchups. So that that one should be, you know this playoff one should be a little more entertaining. But our, mm-hmm. at least my team will be a little bit healthier because I had no Kamara, I had no Darren Waller at that point. So, you know, my, my team should be healthier back up to what its true status should be pending any injuries this week, praying that there's not any. So we would have, a you know, a, a real good matchup on our hands. Yeah, and I did not expect Leonard Fournette to do as well as he has for me. It's been rolling. I traded a first-round pick at the trade deadline for him, and since then he's been a top-ten back every single week. He's the number 
three or number four overall back right now in fantasy. Do you have Ronald Jones still? Yes. Good, because right now Leonard Fournette did not practice today. Yeah, he was downloading GTA or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, I, so yeah, I got those two guys, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Najee Harris, and then some really good wide receivers. So that, that league's going to be tough. It is. Uh, but like you said, he wasn't practicing Leonard Fournette. We don't know if it's COVID related or not, but we do know that COVID has been an absolute bitch to the NFL. Uh, I think there's been over like 40 players put on the COVID list over these past two days. It's been absolutely crazy. However, I haven't seen anything, any like superstar fantasy players get put on the COVID list yet. So really hoping and praying that doesn't happen. But COVID's been really crazy this week. Yes, it has. So hopefully, you know, it's just a weird hot hot streak, spike, whatever the hell you want to call it, and it just dies down really quickly. We don't have to worry about it much more. But, uh, you know, that might not be the reality. Yeah. I'll have to wait and see. Uh, quick college talk. So we didn't come to you with an episode last week because I was feeling – a little bit under the weather, didn't want to get chased sick, uh, but feel much better now. Took a test, COVID-free, so you love to see it. And uh, we weren't able to talk about the playoffs. I think the right teams got in. There was really no, nothing to do about it. Uh, Alabama upset Georgia, so uh, Alabama had to be in. And then the only teams that maybe could have dethroned Georgia at the time was uh, like Oklahoma State if they won, but they didn't. And they weren't going to anyway. And Notre Dame, they lost their coach and everything. So the right four teams made it. Uh, is it the right order? That can be argued. But round one, Michigan versus Georgia, that'll be a fun one. It'll be a, t- a fun one. And honestly, reality, you know, I, the way how things ended, Michigan probably, in my opinion, should have been ranked number one. But also Michigan's definitely not the number one team in the country. So, like, I can also kind of understand why they're, why they're not. Um, so I, I really can't complain at all. Yeah, I said that I thought it should have been Michigan, Alabama, Cincinnati, Georgia. It would have been the same matchups. Same matchups. So I I feel like as of right now, I feel like it's going to be an SEC rematch in the in the championship, but we'll preview that later on uh, before the games actually happen. So. Word. Uh, other than that, um, when we look at Quinn Ewers, the five-star quarterback, the highest-graded quarterback since. Who is it? I don't even know. Uh, Vince Young? Yep. Since Vince Young, um, he is leaving Ohio State for Texas officially. So he announced that recently. That's going to be a fun one. Him and Bijan Robinson should be a good little time. Steve Sarkeesian should have a have a fun duo on his hands. Ewers should be able to walk right in and take the starting job. He's got enough talent um, and really not much of a battle to worry about in, in Texas right now. So he should be able to come and take that job. You know, maybe he struggles, who knows. But if all things go well, then, you know, this, this is one of those guys that's looked at as a, you know, potential high-end first-round pick in the future could come in and really take the country by storm. So I'm excited to see what happens down there in, in Texas. The, the, the team's got some exciting things. If he plays well, you know, th- this would be his first year starting. If he plays well, like, him and Bijan are enough to, to help win this this team win like most of the games that they're in. Like they could be a borderline playoff team. Yeah. And I been hearing that people think Quinn Ewers just went to Ohio state as a money grab. Yes. Uh, but how does that make sense? Texas makes a lot of money. Each offensive lineman in Texas is making $50,000 a year. Well, because he was, um, he was allowed to leave high school early to go yeah. to Ohio state, but he was not allowed to leave high school early to go to Texas. So mm. he went to Ohio state, got paid a bunch of money, got to leave, school a little early and then went back to where he was going to go. And the whole time it just got some money. Why wouldn't he be able to leave for Texas? I don't know. There was some, some state rules, something weird, but like, so, you know, the, the, the money is really what I think all it came down to. Like he found out he can make some more money at a, at a younger age, went to a place that, you know, had, a, had some talented quarterbacks for him as a talented team. You could learn a couple things in, in a semester there mm-hmm. and then you can take it over to Texas and um, do your thing. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Oh, yeah. Uh, last but not least, Deion Sanders. He comes out and makes history. Jackson State, they pull the number one recruit on 24-7 sports. Also, just all, also like their composite, too. So that means just aggregate, he's number one. Yeah, ESPN has him ranked as the number two recruit. But Travis Hunter, he is leaving Florida State and coming to Jackson State. He initially um, committed to Florida State. He decommitted and is going over to Jackson State. So, pretty big deal for Deion Sanders. But if I'm a top corner recruit, I'm going to go learn from Deion than anyone else in the world. Yeah, you kidding me? And 
I, you know, it's awesome that, you know, in, in HBCU schools getting this promotion to D1 after, you know, Dion takes over the job and all of a sudden they become pretty good and they're getting a lot of good recruits, um, you know, more than that level of college ever really has. And now they get this. It, it's, a, it's a pretty historic thing. It's huge. It's going to be great for the program. They're going to come in and they're going to be more competent than people truly think they're going to be. Like, like they're going to come in and, and have some real success. So I'm looking forward to watching Jackson State play. But this is not last but not least final news. You forgot one piece of big college football news. The Heisman winner. Yeah. Should have been Aiden Hutchinson. No, uh, it should not have. <laughs> what? No. Should have been K9. Yeah. Obviously. It should have been if, if Ohio State if Ohio State didn't make him get benched. Literally, uh, they literally didn't. That game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they didn't make him get benched. Mel Tucker just came up with the worst game plan ever. Why would you only play him five times in the first quarter? Yeah, because or first because, half. Because Mel Tucker's like, oh, we lost the game. Might as, well put, might as well put our losers out. Five touches in the first half, and then only two more after that. Terrible. If he would have had a normal workload, he would have still at least been in the running, and then, um, like he would have had like enough like going into the final weeks where he would have been able to at least. I mean, to be close. fair, he still should have been in the Heisman race. He should have been. Um, like, he would. He probably would have been a fav- Like he would have been a legitimate favorite if he would have gotten a normal workload. The Walker Camp Award winner has place in the top three for Heisman voting every single time except for this year. Walker Camp Award winner went to Kenneth Walker and he finished sixth in Heisman. So he still had a bunch of first place votes too though. Crazy. Yeah. Uh congrats to Bryce Young though. He he played great this season. Uh all right, let's now move over to coaching, yeah. Yeah. It's been a weird year. We've talked about how coaches have deserved to be on the shit list, like Matt Nagy, obviously. And now there's some hate towards guys like Matt Rule and Brian Flores. We've talked about the Brian Flores stuff before. But there's really just a guy out there right now that every time he opens his mouth or every time you see him uh, on the field walking over to congratulate a coach on a victory, it it just continues to get worse down in Jacksonville. I said it. At the time, when he got hired, okay, Urban was going to be a horrible coach in the NFL, and everything has just been really bad. It could it could not have gone any worse than it has so far. Like let's let's be honest, they have two wins on the year. Every we have former players coming out saying that they're getting kicked by him, mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, make your effing kicks in, in warm ups." Yeah, uh, you got players that are like laughing at him, that are making fun of him for the whole grinding on the girl in the bar situation. You've got guys who don't trust him saying saying that he's a loser. You got all, all this crap's going on. Like what? It's kind of funny. I'm not it's, gonna lie. It's hilarious, but I feel bad because I like the Jags and I want them to do well. They're one of my you know favorite eh. teams up there in the league. But it, it, it just it can't get any it, how could it get any worse than it is right now? Well, see, I wanted to pose that question. Uh our buddy Graham, who has been on the show multiple times, uh, he asked us and tweeted out on his own account asking is there, has there ever been a worst first season for a head coach than Urban Meyer? Uh, I want to get your thoughts on that, and then I'll, I'll tell you what I think. I saw what you said in the Twitter group chat, yep. and I agree 1,000%. Like, it, it it really can't be any worse. Like he, I think he legitimately is making his players worse. And we'll get into that topic Uh, in our agree or disagree. All right. So that's going to be fun. Uh, But what I said in the, in the Twitter group chat was that I think if you're looking based off solely football and and record wise, you could argue there's been someone worse and that's Hugh Jackson. If you're looking at like just culture wise and how terrible a coach is in a locker room and everything. Sure. You could argue some guys like a Freddie kitchens or something, but if you put it all together, there's not really a coach who's been as bad when it comes to in the locker room and on the field play. Like, Urban Meyer's been terrible. And uh, I've said for a while on this show that give him a chance, give him a chance, let him figure it out. Uh, and I stand by that. I will continue to stand by the fact that I think coaches deserve a chance and uh, try to make things better. And for a while, it looked like Jacksonville could make things better. They got two wins in four weeks. So I was excited about that. But at this point, I am out on Urban Meyer's Urban Meyer officially. Uh, I think it just now come down to the point where you're wasting Trevor Lawrence's time and talent. 
if you keep him around. You could never add up enough positives from at this point going forward what we can get from Irvin Meyer to outweigh even a third of the negatives that arise with him sticking with the team. Unless he like flips the team around and wins the Super Bowl this year. Which yeah. they've got two wins and I think there's five weeks left, four or five weeks left. Four weeks. Four weeks. So, so six wins and winning the Super Bowl? Not gonna make playoffs, but Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. I, I, I do they win another game this year? No. Probably maybe, they, maybe this week. They yeah, they play Houston this week, but that, that's about it. Sneak peek. I'm not going Jackson though. <laughs> um all right, uh, other coaching. I mean, Brian Flores, he's definitely picked it back up. Yeah, he's no he's no longer in the hot seat. Uh, Matt Nagy is absolutely still in the hot he seat. He is fired for this year. He's terrible. Uh, Matt Rule, getting a lot of hate recently. He brought in Cam Newton after Sam Darnold went on IR. Um, while Cam Newton's come in a couple of games and has gotten benched a couple of times for P.J. Walker. Uh, I don't really agree with that choice. Joe Brady gets fired, like... It's just some craziness happening over in Carolina, and it's frustrating because I like Joe Brady, I like Matt Rule, and I like the Panthers, so I want to see them have success. But right now, I cannot root for them. Like, if you look at most dysfunctional teams right now, Jacksonville is obviously number one. It feels like Carolina's number two. I agree. It's it's a good enough roster to at least be truly competitive in every single game and be closer to a 500 type of team. Like, like we saw at the beginning of the year, they played some easier opponents, but they looked really good doing it at the same time. So when things have fallen apart the way they have, you have to put it on, on the coaching. Obviously, Sam Darnold was not playing great until he got hurt. The quarterback situation hasn't been awesome. CMT's been getting hurt. But that defense should be good enough where they should be able to keep the team in close games and win some low-scoring games. Like It could legitimately be a top-three defense in the league, in, in my opinion. I agree. And it just hasn't really been that way. And you, you have you have to turn to the coaches on that one. There's nowhere else you can turn to. So he deserves some, some heat. He does not deserve to be fired yet. He deserves... Another year to see what happens. Uh, they have to find another quarterback. They can't roll with one of these three guys. Like that, that, that is proven. Who you're going to find, I don't know. So they got to figure that out. If they can't figure it out, then maybe he deserves the can. I agree with you there. Uh, anyone else? I mean, I know Kyle Shanahan was getting a little bit of hate from you in the beginning. He's really turned it around recently. Uh, yeah. His team's currently sitting in the playoffs. Can't hate on him. Like, like the you know, I, I still question his true offensive genius at this point because they've never had just these – unreal crazy offenses but you know he's at, he's definitely more competent than a lot of the other coaches we talk about so you can't really pile on him too much more than that he's figured it out yeah and jimmy garoppolo has been really good recently and they've got some offensive pieces back healthy and they're playing pretty well kittle is just tearing up the league right now yeah uh and while we are still on coaching and about to head over to talk about our teams I have two coaches and i think you're gonna bring up the one yeah uh uh, go your other coach first, so, and then we can talk about my So guy. I want to mention, you know, um, Dave Cooley. That's, that's how you say his last name, right? Yeah. Down in, with uh, Houston. the Texans. Yeah. Like, I know he doesn't have a lot to work with, Um, so I'm, I'm not – I'm giving this guy benefit of the doubt. I just – I never really liked the hire in the first place. I neither. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not someone that you should move on after a year because this roster is so depleted for talent. Maybe he can do something else with it going forward, but it's just a guy worth keeping an eye on because if they do – Somehow get D Watts back next year. Um, you know that'll be his real test. I, I doubt that'll happen, but if somehow it works out that way, that you know we'll kind of get the real taste of whatever Dave Cooley is. And I want D Watts back immediately. Yes. Like, if Carolina can find out a swing to get Deshaun Watson, that's perfect. The fact that he's not been playing this long though is stupid. Yeah, it sucks. And and the Texans are just letting him do it too. They're just rostering him and paying him just to not to play. It, it's so dumb. Yeah. Uh, final guy. I assume that you said. It's probably the same guy, so yeah. Zach Taylor. Um, it it was so hard for me, and I, I put a tweet out there. Zach Taylor has brought me in, brought me to my seat, the edge of my seat, and then there's been times where I'm just like, what the hell are you doing? And so I tweeted out after the game against the 49ers, officially, I am out on Zach Taylor. I don't think he is the guy to bring us to a Super Bowl. Um, he beat the Steelers without Joe Burrow last year. He absolutely pummeled the Ravens this year. So many things where I'm like, oh, this looks awesome. It looks like he's finally finding his footing. But then he comes out, and in overtime against the 49ers, he's got Joe Burrow first down 
at the 49ers 26 yard line. Joe Burrow's two for two, 50 yards. He's absolutely slinging that ball. And they decide to only do run plays from there on out. Like, what are we doing? Like, the conservatism that he shows in desperate times during the game has been way too often. So it's to the point where I'm ready to give it up. I know he came out and said that he lost sleep over the conservative play calling. And, you know, some fans were like, oh, he lost sleep. Like, he's going to make changes. Like, it's okay. This has happened 10 plus times. And he still hasn't changed. So I, I'm I'm ready to be out on Zach Taylor. I think he can be a decent coach in the NFL. I just don't think he'll ever be the guy. My thoughts have never changed. He's not someone who's winning a Super Bowl. You just don't like his face. I don't like his face. You've told me that so many times. But he's also just not. I never thought it was a great hire. I don't like the jump right from QB coach to head coach. You know, I wasn't a big fan of the jump up from tight end coach to to head coach either. That's pretty much what Dan Campbell did. But, you know. But Dan Campbell's a guy because he has one win. But at least the difference of personalities is what gets me in. Like. Like, Just because like, Dan Campbell's rah-rah and Zach Taylor's like, come on, guys, we're all best friends. That's the difference? Actually, like like le- le- legitimately. How does, that, how does that make sense? They're both player guys, player personnel guys. Yeah, but like Dan Campbell is like. Just because he screams. Yes, because he's the man. Because hmm. you, you can tell like. like you can, He's got really good play calling too. He's got great play calling. <laughs> you, you can tell that like, the players enjoy playing for him. and So do the Bengals. <clears throat> for Zach Taylor? Because yes. He, because he's so easy. Where people want to go through a wall for Dan Campbell. People don't want to go through walls for Zach Taylor. They just want to do show they? up to the field. Yeah, they do. It's very it's very clear they do. Yeah, so, they're, they're playing like it, that's for sure. They they are. Have you seen <laughs> that, that roster? It's brutal. No, it's really good. Um Zach Taylor sucks. Is is that it Deal for Bengals it. Lions talk? Do you want to talk anything more about Alliance? I have nothing else to say. They're like like I don't want I don't want them to win another game this year. So like I'm, that's why I'm not gonna be mad if they keep losing. I I'd rather them lose. Just get just get the highest draft capital you can at this point. Right. Um. I guess I'll end it with the Bengals. Uh. They need to win three of their next four. They want to make the playoffs, but they're gonna go one and three. I'm calling that right now. So what, what what's the record right now? They're they're even. They're seven and six. Seven and six. They, they can go. I, I don't know how it's all how the AFC's all shaking. I know it's AFC's a little tighter this year, but could they not go nine and eight, make it? They're currently out of the playoffs right now. Okay. Uh, they've got the Broncos this week. Then they have the Ravens. Then the Chiefs. Then the Browns. So they need to beat the Ravens and the Browns because both are currently higher than them. Uh, so, so say say they lost to the Broncos, the Chiefs, and they beat both Ravens and the Browns. That gives them a chance to make it still. As long as they get a little bit of help too, yeah. But I think they need to go three and one to lock themselves in a spot. I think they go one and three. I think they beat the Broncos, and that's it. And we'll see. All right. Well, now that the frustration's off the chest, uh, let's go to AOD. Agree or disagree? Uh, I've got eight statements here for you. I'm ready. You you tell me if you agree or you disagree, and then give me a little bit of your reasoning. All right. All right. Number one, the Steelers are the most self-centered, delusional group of players that we've seen in years. Obviously, I agree. Dude, <laughs> like, look at what they're doing. It's brutal. Like, what's Chase Claypool doing celebrating when they've got no timeouts or running clock 26 seconds while they're losing? What, like, like, what, like, what are we doing here? I, I, don't, I don't like the, the culture that the Pittsburgh Steelers have. And they're not a good team either. So you can't, like, even have that culture. And if you, if you have that culture and you're winning... Whatever you can, you kind of can. When you have the culture and you're losing, it's embarrassing. You know what I didn't realize is earlier that game, Chase Claypool got benched, and then he came back in, dude, and then pulled the shit that he did. He's been a dumbass all season. He's been doing a lot of stupid shit. Mm-hmm. Like, like he's so talented where he can, if he just like had more situational awareness and less cockiness, you know, like receivers you know, tend to do now, like nowadays, um, he, he would be pretty impactful and. I think it'll be more impactful the better quarterback down the road too. And they should make a little bit of a difference, but like still, you know, you, you can't be putting your teams in these situations. Juju last year doing his TikTok dances. That was very cringe and uh, was a little bit of a distraction. Then he got big Ben this year where I feel like he's just one of those old man, uh, old men that just don't really care anymore. Yeah. Like he's not going to put Claypool in line. I don't think. Uh, and then TJ Watt, like, 
what I don't know what happened to that dude, but he has got an attitude. He's out punching people in uh like big pile ups and stuff and he's still, like he's still playing really good. Well yeah, <laughs> but he's getting like a little aggressive to the point where he's gonna start drawing some flags. Yeah, he might. But so. but he is playing really good and they give good players benefit of the doubt in the NFL. So but I agree that <laughs> Steelers are yeah. All right, number two. The Chiefs are back to the top two of the AFC. They're back to a top two dynamo. I, I agree. I, I knew this was going to happen like, earlier in the year. Like, they had a slow start, and you, you can maybe question some things, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I, people have down seasons, team have down seasons, and they weren't going to let it last too long. Sure enough, they have not let it last very long, and they look very good again. And, like, Mahomes is still finding success without having huge weeks every week from Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Like, they've been... Both been fine this year. They haven't been like just truly dominant by any means. Um, he, he's finding you know ways through through the running back, through his other receivers, through carrying himself. He, he's getting it done. The defense is playing a lot better too. Uh, they were struggling kind of hard in the beginning of the year, but they're figuring it out a little bit. So the team's just coming together as a whole. So I agree. Yeah, and uh, you thought I was crazy when I had the Chiefs in the in my top ten, our last power rankings. Yeah, because it was it was just still just they weren't quite there yet for me. Like I knew they were going to get there, but they just weren't quite there yet. And then number three, let's go. The Packers are the best team in football. I'm going to disagree. Oh, it's close. Um, Because, like, really, they're the best team because Aaron Rodgers is playing so well. And they have a very, very good, arguably maybe best running back duel in the league. You could could say that the Browns are better, but that would maybe be about it. Like, when A.J. Jones would get in the ball, you've, you've seen that this dude is legitimately talented and Aaron Jones is obviously Aaron Jones. Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams. But the defense, you know, they, they've, they've been a bit injured. Jair Alexander's been out for a lot of the season, so it's not like they're incredibly deep at the corner position. Um, up front, what's his nuts has been a little bit injured. Um, you know, oh, I'm drawing a blank on. You don't know either. But anyway. I, I don't know who you're alluding to. Uh, defensive lineman. Edge or inside? Inside. I don't know, whatever. I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank. They, they, regardless, they've, they've had some injuries back there, and their defense isn't incredibly deep as it is. But they're just finding a way to ver- look very good every week. So that's how you can make the argument. But I'm still putting my my money on the Bucks at this point going forward. Okay. Uh, it's just not even going to show me. Whatever. It, it's not a big deal. It, it's not a big deal. Kenny Clark. Yes, there, there we go. go. <laughs> there we go. It was a big deal. Um, next up, uh, I would personally say the Packers are the best team in the league. Yeah, I thought, I thought you would. Right now. Uh, next up, the Patriots will yet again be a perennial playoff team under Mac Jones. Um, I'm going to half agree if I can do that because it just depends how long Belichick's coaching. I don't know how much longer he's going to do it because he's getting into his later 60s. Um, you know, Maybe he decides he wants to retire and be grouchy somewhere else for a little while for the rest of his life. I don't know. Um, if Belichick's coaching for a long time, I will agree. But if he ends up you know, hanging up after the next four or five years, then i got to disagree. Well... Tom Brady didn't need Bill Belichick. That's because Tom Brady's different. Mac Jones is not Tom Brady. <laughs> I don't I'll tell know. you that for free. I don't Mac know. Jones is a lower A dot than Tua did in his rookie year. Ask Davey. Yeah, uh, Tom Brady's got a terrible A dot. No, not not in Tampa, dude. Well, because he's got people that can stretch the field, like yeah, AB and Mike down. Evans. Yeah, and, and you know when he was in New England, he had had no choice but to throw it short because he had Julian Edelman who could run six yards downfield and then catch the ball. That's the time. same with Mac Jones. He doesn't yeah. have anyone. But even like when he was in Bama, it was still same kind of place. Like I don't, I'm not saying that he can't throw the ball downfield. I'm just saying that like right now he doesn't have to. Seems like and, you are. and we would have to see what would happen with a different coach. But right now Belichick's a big reason that teams having the success that they are. Mac Jones is Tom Brady. No. Yes. No. Uh, number five. There is no reason to be cur- concerned about Trevor Lawrence. It's just an urban thing. Disagree. Because you want to say it's just an urban thing, but at the end of the day, he could have done a lot of damage. Urban Meyer could have done a lot of damage to him, and then a new coach comes in, and some things can't be fixed. Like Sam Darnold came in, and the damage was done to him in New York. It came to Carolina. looked like he maybe figured it out. But at the end of the day, he reverted back to him old, his old self. And his old self was really not the way he was in college. Like, he was a, showing as a better prospect, someone who had the right tools just to, had to be kind of translated up to that next level in the NFL, and never no no coach ever did that with him. Where Trevor Lawrence, you know, he's a truly, like, great prospect where he is at worst borderline elite in every category of a quarterback position. 
but still needs to take the next step in every single spot to truly be that guy. Like he, he still, you know, the, his throwing ac- accuracy and, and, and power could still increase a little bit. The athleticism still, still increase a little bit. The situational awareness could still increase a little bit, just enough to get him to that level. And maybe Erm Meyer brought him down a couple notches where to the point where he's not gonna be able to get back up to that top. So, you know, you, you have to have some concern still. Uh, before the 2020 season started, I said, I just desperately do not want Trevor Lawrence going to the Jags because it's going to be another Blaine Gabbert situation. The stud, long-haired quarterback comes into Jacksonville and just can't figure it out. So I did not want this to happen. It happened, and it's scary right now. I agree. There is definitely some concern about Trevor Lawrence. It's not just an urban thing. He'll be fine until he cuts his hair. If he cuts his hair, then his career is over. Because that's what Blaine Gabbert did. Blaine Gabbert cut his hair, and then he went around being back up his no, own career. They're going to lose Urban Meyer, and then he's going to lose the hair. And he's going to be like, all right, See, it's a new day in Jacksonville. Remember when Justin Herbert cut his hair, and he had a, had a bad stretch? Yeah. His hair's back to his normal length, and he's balling. It's mm-hmm. the hair. Do not cut your hair. I agree. It's a great point. Uh, number six, the Bills are currently not a Super Bowl contender. I'm going to disagree because it's still, it still is all just dependent on the running game. And yet it's bad, but they've had some success this season without the running game already right now. Things are looking a little iffy. They've had a tougher schedule this last couple of weeks too. But um, once they get into playoffs, if Josh Allen can kind of put the team on his back, the defense is strong enough where they can, you know, try to just not have to try to try to work around not having a running game. I should say um, it's, it's close, but they, they're a Super Bowl contender. And, you know, just add in a quality running back, and they're a legitimate Super Bowl contender, if that makes sense. Uh, well, no, the Bills absolutely are not a Super Bowl contender because they are not only one-dimensional on offense, but they are one-dimensional on defense, too. They cannot stop the run. Jonathan Taylor torched the Bills. That's Jonathan Taylor. He's gross. The New England Patriots duo torched the Bills. Because Ron Stevenson's gross. And then Lennon Fournette this past well, week is kind of gross. torched the Bills. So, so they can't stop the run right now. Uh, they're also giving up big plays. And the defense, although they've got good personnel and they can make some plays, they also give up plays. And when you have such a one-dimensional offense and one-dimensional defense, you're not a Super Bowl contender. Pick me. You're a playoff contender pick, pick for me. sure. Pick me. But you're not a pick, Super Bowl pick, pick contender. Me. The only one of those games that, um, like, even slightly concerned me was the Patriots game because you knew they were going to be running the ball with those wins, and they still had the success. The other games, like, Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in the league right now. Nope. Um, he, I mean, he is. Sorry. Joe Mixon is. Sorry. Shut the hell up. So, Jonathan Taylor has been running wild on everybody he's played. It has not really mattered. And then Leonard Fournette has been doing the same thing recently. They have a very strong O-line. And they've just been finding the holes, and Leonard Fournette's been finding all those holes and running right through them. Like, dude's just been playing extremely well. So, you know, I'm not as worried about those two, whereas the Patriots one, like, you knew it was coming and it's still going to be stopped. That's where it's a little concerning. But the thing is, you can't have 10 Super Bowl contenders. No, you you can have five to six. And you think that the Bills are in the top five or six teams in the league you right know, now? I'd, I don't think so. I'd have to sit down and list it, but pro- they're probably right about there at least. I think right now they're sitting in that 8 to 12 range. They've been incredibly disappointing. They're now down to seven and six on the year. I just think that they're not a Super Bowl contender right now. I think that they can be in a couple of years once they get some of this stuff figured out, or maybe they can even later this season if they get it figured out. But as of right now, they need to figure some stuff out on both offense and defense. There's concerns to be had, but I'm less concerned than you are. Uh, Number seven. Once Derrick Henry returns to the Titans, the Titans will be the best team in the AFC. No, I disagree. I absolutely disagree. It's, it, it still is the Chiefs. I think it is absolutely asinine. The amount of people out there right now that are saying, hey, this Titans team is still a top 10 team right now. Once Derrick Henry comes back, they'll be all good. They'll be perfect. They'll be ready to go. I'm just thinking, why do you currently have them in the top 10 right now? Since Derrick Henry's been out, they have not been able to out scrimmage yard anyone except for Jacksonville this past week. Yeah. They've been terrible. I don't get why we're just forgetting about or just not paying attention to what's happening on the field right now. 
they're a top ten team with Derrick Henry back in, in the lineup because you know what they're going to do without if him. If he's good if he's and healthy, healthy, yeah. Like yeah. if there's any lingering issues or anything, like he's what twenty seven now, twenty eight, yeah, something like that. So I am a little bit worried. They're they're erring on the side of caution with his injury, and he's but he's sitting out the longer end compared to the shorter end. Like realistically, he could have came back week sixteen or seventeen, but they're saying week eighteen is going to be the earliest. They're they're erring on the side of caution, and that makes me feel a little bit better about it. Um, he he is good enough where it's going to propel that team into top ten consideration, and you know as long as AJ Brown can like stay healthy and, and Julio can stay on the field, then then they're fine. But obviously, the Julio one's a big concern, and AJ Brown has been a little underwhelming because Tannehill's kind of struggled this year too. So. Mm-hmm. Once Derrick Henry's back in, if that offense clicks, then you know they've got a chance to maybe do some damage, but they're not like a true contender. Yeah. Uh, finally, Jared Goff can be that no. guy in Detroit. Why not? No. You got you guys that big win. He got us the big win. Uh huh. Cap. He threw the one he drive. Threw the, he threw the game winning to Amon Ra. He he looked solid on that drive. He looked solid at best on that drive. Graham is a Jared Goff guy now. And Graham is also an idiot. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, that's rude. Well, okay, you know how Graham is? He's the most optimistic Lions fan ever. You know he's watching this. I know he is. <laughs> he's, like, incredibly optimistic. He and, is. And, it's, you know, it's great to have that mentality, but I, I find myself, you know, more in the middle, semi closer to pessimistic. If you had to lean one way or another, I would guess. And, like, realistically, Jared Goff, just, he's just clearly not it. He, he can't do anything. To help your offense, he just sometimes he can do things that won't hurt your offense, but oftentimes he does things that do hurt your offense. Jared Goff or Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold, Jared Goff or Taylor Heineke, Taylor Heineke because he can kind of run. Jared Goff or Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, we'll have Man, to. You know my disdain for Jalen Hurts. We'll have to do a full list sometime like in an episode because there's not many that are I'd love to know them. uh Jared Goff or Gardner Minshew I mean like re- realistically Jared Goff but like I, I would be more than fine watching Gardner Minshew get a chance here in the truck he, he balled out in Philly he, he did play well it was one week but like it wasn't like he was making incredibly difficult throws or anything I, st- yeah. I, I still wish Detroit would have traded for him especially with what the value was just in case he needed to get in for a game or two just like why not he, he's fun to watch and you know realistically is he like a special quarterback? No, you know Jared Goff has more of the traits, but at the same time, you look back at Gardner Minshew, his career stats, he does play a very efficient game and doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. So who knows? We'll have to do that list for sure. Uh, Goff versus you know whoever else, and we'll go through it. Maybe we'll do it when we finally get another person on the show and we get Graham in here. I'm in. So we'll see what his opinion is. All right, well, let's go to our week picks. Uh, when we look back at week 14, you weren't here. You folks weren't here when we were making these picks because, unfortunately, we were not uh, doing the show at that time. Uh, again, I was under the weather. But it was a really good week across the board, except for our buddy Chase. It wasn't a bad week for me. It just you guys had better weeks. Yeah, okay. Well, when you look at the matchups, like, who's picking the Jets over the Saints? Me. So Chase went eight and six, respectable. Uh, Graham, Chris, Garrett, and Davey and Vegas all went eleven and three. Davey's in this now, by the way. Yes, uh, all went eleven and three, and then Johnny and I went twelve and two. So when we look across the board right now, Johnny is still in first place, uh, one hundred and thirty-one and seventy-seven. I'm one game back. Graham is three games back from Johnny, two games back from me. And uh, currently last is Chris, Davey, and Chase combined. Word. So. Oh, combined word last? Uh, Did you have like 20, 20 correct wins? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right, let's get into week 15 here. There's some really good matchups. Starting off Thursday night, we've got Kansas City traveling to Los Angeles to play the Chargers. The Chiefs are a three-point favorite. Should be a very fun game. Got to go with the Chiefs in this one. Uh, Chargers, I think they have a realistic chance to come out with a win, but at the end of the day, the Chiefs have just been rolling, and Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. I absolutely agree. I'm going KC in that one, too. Uh, Las Vegas at Cleveland. Cleveland is a three-point favorite. Cleveland may be out with some people. Baker Mayfield, uh, he's on the COVID list. I know Stefanski, he is also on the COVID list. So, Yeah, and Kareem Hunt looks like he's not going to play. 
Um, Nick Chubb, I think, is going to play, though. Yeah. So it's going to be really on the backs of Nick Chubb. And I think this is going to be a really close one. I think I'm going to have to give the edge to Cleveland. Um, I, I I don't feel great about it. I could very well see Las Vegas come out with this win, but at the end of the day, it's the Raiders. It's late in the season. They tend to blow these types of things. Yes, absolutely. Cleveland as well for me. New England at Indianapolis. Indianapolis, a two-and-a-half point favorite. Yeah, this should be another good game. I, I, I It's going to be, you know, not like a heavy passing game, but it's going to be, you know, pretty good smash-mouth football, you know, like, like the Big Ten on steroids. I'm going to go with the Colts in this one. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to go out there and have a pretty good week. Um, I think that both running games are good. Like gonna get at minimum 100 yards combined, like if if not one or like 100 yards each, you know, at maybe 120, 150. Like it, it's gonna be one of those types of games, but I think the Colts come out with it. Uh, I'm going New England for this one. I just can't help but think this New England team is so hot right now. I find them being one of the best teams in football right now. So I'm gonna go with them. Uh, next up, Washington football team at Philly. Philly is a four and a half point favorite. Yeah, I'll go the Eagles. Um, Washington's doing some things, trending in the right direction, but they're still not that great, and Taylor Heineke is not a very good quarterback, even though I'd still take him over Jared Goff, I think, just because of the running. It doesn't matter. Eagles' defense has been pretty solid, and the offense is good enough. The Eagles are going to win it. Yeah, Washington's been really interesting recently, and that's why I'm going to pick them. Uh, So we've got two matchups difference already, so that's really nice. Uh I don't really know what it's about that uh, this football team has me feeling this type of way. Uh, Heineke got benched last week, and Kyle Allen came in, but Kyle Allen did some pretty nice things. Taylor Heineke's going to be the starter this week. I think he'll get back on track. Give me him over Jalen Hurts. Uh, Next up, Carolina at Buffalo. Buffalo, a a 10.5-point favorite. Buffalo, not really much of a question. Agreed. Miami hosts the New York Jets. Miami an eight and a half point favorite. That's crazy from where they started at the beginning of the year. I am taking Miami, of course, but you know, the thought that they would have that kind of spread going into a game is crazy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agree. Dallas at the New York Giants. Dallas a ten and a half point favorite. Honestly, wouldn't have been surprised if it was larger. Dallas Cowboys. We got a couple uh, easy ones in a row here. How about this yeah. one? The Derrick Henry list Tennessee Titans. Go over to Pittsburgh to play the Steelers. The Titans are still a one and a half point favorite. This game's pretty damn close to a pick 'em, and I'm gonna make my pick 'em choice of the Tennessee Titans, the team that I think is the better team. Uh, Steelers suck. Ben sucks. Everyone sucks, except for Najee. He's good. Uh, I really don't want to pick the Steelers, but I think I'm going to. Mike's a big Steelers guy, huh? No. Huge Steelers fan over here, guys. I'm going to get you a Steelers hoodie for Christmas. But like I said, Tennessee, they haven't outgained anyone except for Jacksonville. And that defense for Pittsburgh's pretty solid as long as Big Ben doesn't kill him with turnovers or Chase Claypool kill him with penalties, then uh, uh, like showboatmanship, you know, uh, I think Najee might be able to have himself a little bit of a game. So I'll go Steelers just slightly. Gross. Houston at Jacksonville. Houston, let's not talk about this game. Jacksonville's a three-point favorite. That's that's stu- That's horrible. I don't care how bad Houston is. Urban Meyer is going to find a way to piss away every game the rest of the year. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this game at all. Houston. All right, then Arizona at Detroit, <laughs> where Detroit is a thirteen and a half point underdog. Detroit's going to win this one. All boy. right, no, right absolutely not. Honestly, at this point, just start taking your shots. You're already last. <laughs> no, the Cardinal. If if if, if I. Can I get extra points for saying the Cardinals are going to win by 40? If they actually win by 40, yes. Okay, cool. But if they don't, you only get a half point. Hey, no, 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 no. All right. I'll just do uh, minus 40 for you. (laughs) And if you're right, I'll give you one and a half points. Let's go. All right. Atlanta at San Francisco. San Francisco, a nine-point favorite. Yeah. Makes sense. 49ers. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm going 49ers uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I can't, can't go all in. I can't do it. Cincinnati at Denver. Who's the favorite? Cincinnati's the favorite. Denver is the favorite. One Small. and a half yeah. points. I have not chosen against Cincinnati all year, and that is staying the case because they're just a better team than Denver. You know what's funny is they got you off to a big lead when they were five and two. Now, now they're, they're just seven and six. Me down <laughs> and they are the, the reason you're dropping. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're still a better team than the Broncos. They are. And they should beat them. But 
Will they? We'll see. You know what I think is going to happen? I think Cincinnati might come out and beat the Broncos by three scores just so that I can get my hopes up the next week. There's, there's a chance. Uh, Green Bay at Baltimore. Green Bay, a four-and-a-half-point favorite. Hmm. Lamar is questionable. He's yeah. got that ankle thing. I'm going to assume that Lamar is not playing, so we'll go with the Packers in this one. If Lamar was playing, I like guaranteed I'd consider it a little more, but I still probably lean Packers anyway. I go to Packers as well. Uh, Seattle at the Los Angeles Rams, a four and a half point favorite for the Rams. Rams, it should be bigger. Uh, New Orleans at Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, eleven point favorite. Uh, they might not cover, but they will win. The Tampa Bay Bucks. That is agreed. Minnesota at Chicago, Minnesota, a three and a half point favorite. Matt Nagy sucks. Devin Cook's the man. He's going to have a hell of a week against Chicago. Vikings win. There we go. That's it for the predictions. We have three differences. New Start Eng- off hot. New England and Indy, uh, Washington, Philly, and Pittsburgh and Tennessee. Beautiful. So there we go. I really didn't like picking Pittsburgh there, but kind of have to but do you're a what big Steelers you do. Fan. I've got Najee Harris, so if he blows up this week, that means I likely win my first uh, my round one of playoffs. So I'm okay with it. Fair enough. All right, well, that's going to do it for the show. We want to thank you so much for coming out and giving us a listen. If you want to stay up to date with all that we do, you can follow us on Twitter at WNP Sports Pod. That's, again, on Twitter at WNP Sports Pod. Uh, all of our other socials are going to be down in the description as well if you're interested in following those. We've got a Facebook group. We've got an Instagram page. And, yes, we do have a TikTok, and we are actually posting pretty consistently on our TikTok now. Uh, once we have these episodes up, then the TikToks, you know, actually have some stuff going on. So make sure to check out the TikTok for sure. If you're listening on YouTube, want to thank you. Uh, we'll give you a little wave because, you know, video video show now. Uh, thanks for watching on YouTube. If you could, please give us a like, uh, comment, and subscribe. And then if you could hit the bell to turn on notifications, we would really appreciate that. And then if you're listening on a podcast platform, if you could, please give us a five-star rating and a follow. We would absolutely love you for it. Thanks so much for listening. And as always, we're not professionals. Wrong one. (laughs) (laughs) And we're not professionals. See that? We're really not professionals because we can't even get our own outro outro music right. Whatever. Outro. Outro. That's the show.